Well, here we go. The downdraft gasification unit was finally finished. Built this thing completely from scratch. Dreamed about plans on how to build it and just trial and error and seeing how things would work. Built out of 3 16 inch plate steel, uh, but it's reinforced on the inside with 3 quarter inch uh, railway track tie plates, which act as an air curtain on all the side walls. So, yeah, no heat gets really through the sides of this thing. A little bit, but not much. Here's the fan box. Just a regular uh, pellet stove exhaust fan. That's my clean out port on the back. Pretty simple operation on that. I just lit the thing, so she's just taken off. You can see the bottom is filling with smoke here. Once this thing uh, ignites, she'll go crazy with a huge flame down there. As you can see, she's already firing. You know, the reflections make it really hard to see anything. It's annoying, but once this thing takes off, this thing will just be a giant blowtorch in there. I have a glass door on the bottom of the stove, and then I also have this uh, air and air chamber temperature, so that tells me the temperature that's going on in there. Generally, this thing just lit, so it was stone cold. Um, give this thing about a minute, and that thing will be up to about 850 degrees, 900 degrees. It'll wrap that needle right around. You need to get a larger uh, scale thermometer, but that one only does 850. The orange plate in the front, that's my uh, my fire bed. It's made to be removable, so it's just sealed with silicone for the air. Um, I can just basically take out a few screws and slide that fire bed out in case I need to repair it or rebuild it or do anything else to the stove. That's the fire lighting door. Basically, slide this open, there's a chute. I just basically drop one little strip of uh, birch bark in there. So this stuff's dynamite. I just rip a tiny strip off the bun inch wide, slide it down the hole, light that on fire, and that lights this thing up. It's super simple to put fire to this thing. Um, I just finished cleaning out the burn chamber. Basically, I just take two nuts off, the plate comes off, and then the uh, heat exchange tubes are right there. Uh, I have a, a tool that I made that slides down, scrapes. The insides of the uh, the exchanger tubes. Pardon my waving the stupid camera all over the place, but tripping over freaking garbage in my shop as always. So this is my wheezy little cleaning tool. It's one of the cutouts for the exchange tubes, a three-inch disc, and all I do is slide that down in there. Once down and once up, exchanger tubes clean. So very simple to clean this thing out. Two identical stove doors. One was a nickel plated door. I took the glass out of it because that still houses my air intake now, but I can still also put my waste oil injector unit on there so I can also run this thing on used motor oil. But uh, I haven't done that yet. I'm still just playing with the wood. Uh, this thing works extremely well four heat exchange tubes and that. The water in the back there is 10 inches deep like to the back and I guess uh, 40 inches tall, 24 inches wide. So that's roughly, I don't know, you know, 45 gallons, something like that. And then there's also a three inch um, deep water tank on the bottom that is 24 inches wide and 48 inches, or sorry, 36 inches long the length of the stove so it holds a fair bit of water heats the water up very fast uh, then it just goes into a 40 gallon hot water tank out in my storage shed where those are recirculated in and out of here and then from there the house feeds off that uh, 40 gallon hot water tank and then heats all the water in the ground to the house it's a hundred feet but uh, yeah it has no problem heating the house um, I've been finding myself turning the heat down a lot. Um, this is a very 
simple way that I control this thing is with uh, an Inkbird Wi-Fi thermostatic control. So I just basically set the temperature at however I want it to. As you see, I have it set to 159. When it reaches 159, it shuts the fan off. And then when it cools off 15 degrees, I have it set, switch the fan back on again. So the temperature is just controlled by simply turning the exhaust fan off and on. Um, very simple control unit. All of this, the fans, the pumps, and everything on this unit all run off my uh, solar system. So I have a battery backup system and it'll run all this stuff so I can have heat in my house. Even if the power goes out, um, I'll still have heat. The batteries will run all this stuff for a good 10 hours, no problem. They barely take any power. All the pumps and fans and everything together only draws like 8% of the load on my 6,000 watt inverter. So very low consumption um, and it'll last a long time. So yeah, there you have it. I'll have some more video clips and pictures uh, when I was constructing this thing included in this video. And uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, I can try and answer one of the app. But like I said, I bought all new steel for this thing, new steel, uh, the doors I had, but everything else, uh, the fan I had already, but all the steel that I used for this thing, for the heat exchange tubes, the plate steel to construct this thing, all in cost me less than a thousand dollars for the steel. Um, the doors I had, I mean those doors are expensive, um, they're from a wood stove like Kodiak 1700 that I own, but I'm using the door on it because hey, I have two of them. The, the nickel one was thrown in the garbage because the nickel was peeling a bit on it, but yeah, who cares? It was a brand new door. It was worth $600, so um, yeah, I'm not going to throw that away. And it works fabulous. It's my fire lo or wood loading door. I open that up. I can dump. I can pretty much fit almost two wheelbarrow loads into the stove, and with that fill, this thing will run for at least, mm, I'm going to say probably... 15 to 16 hours on a fill of wood so uh, I've only been putting like you know five six seven pieces in it and it'll run for eight hours on that so you know and it's but it, again it all depends on the heat load right now it's not very cold outside yet but once the temperature drops then the uh, the heat load will demand more and the stove will run more often uh, I run it. I do run a very low pressure system. I only run 15 pounds of water pressure in the system. I have relief valves here and in the boiler shop and in the house everywhere. Um, got an auto fill valve, but I didn't want to run any water pressure in it. But I was tired of listening to the water gurgling all the time. I still have to put an air bleeder on that cap right there. I have a brass air bleeder on. It. I just haven't gotten there yet, so. One piece at a time, I just wanted to get this damn thing up and running. It took me a month and a half to build this. Uh, just scratching my head a lot, looking at it, seeing how I wanted to do it. The welding was quite intricate. Um, you have to weld perfectly. It's like uh, B pressure welding, so you can't have a single air leak or you'll have water leaks you know, from this corner. So all the seams, inside, outside, around the edges, everywhere, are all pre-tested uh, basically all I have to do is weld it I spray some soap water on it and then blast it with air from the backside and see if I get any air bubbles and I had quite a few small tiny pinholes that I had to go back and and patch up you know when you're doing a four foot long weld your eyes start to go crossed and it's pretty hard to stay concentrated but all in all the welding was uh, was a lot of fun I did buy a new welder for this project the welder was only 400 bucks and it absolutely worked phenomenal um, it was a 220 volt uh, MIG TIG you know, arc combination unit and I love it. So yeah, um, cleaning this thing is easy. Like I said, just basically take that back port off, scrape the burn tubes and I scrape the ashes out of the bottom, yeah, whatever, once every two weeks and top ash as well. There's, I don't really ever need to clean that. But uh, yeah, this thing's been working phenomenally. It's heating my house and then I'm gonna get this thing connected to my hot tub so I can get everything heated off this unit all winter long. So anyways, thanks for watching this and I'll try to correspond all these video clips together so you can see uh, the construction process of it. I didn't videotape a lot of it just because I was, 
you know, in the zone and wasn't into making a, a full-on video on constructing this thing. Um, but I will show, you know, how I did build it and all the parts that I it literally just pulled out of the top of my head. Um, like the, the funky little uh, chimney box that I made there. Uh, that's all it needs. That thing sucks all the air out of the stove. So it's a negative pressure gasification unit. And that little pellet stove motor is more than enough flow for this thing to burn perfectly. And uh, yeah, this thing just makes a ton of heat. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Drop a comment if you uh, like it. And even if you don't, don't really care. Anyways, thanks for watching.